All right, you guys are going to get a kick out of this one. So Dean Phillips, uh, who is still running for president against Biden, Marianne Williamson has already dropped out. So now it's just uh, Biden versus Dean Phillips and uh, Cenk Uger's on some ballots and trying to get on others. He's got the naturalized citizen issue that he's trying to work out, but he's also technically still in the race. Um, so Dean Phillips is doing a radio interview and... Look at this. Presidential candidate Dean Phillips is floating a bipartisan unity ticket with Nikki Haley. Phillips, currently polling at 15% nationally in the Democratic primary, remarked he is open to running as Haley's vice president. So I actually have some of the direct quote for you here. In an interview Thursday with a Minneapolis news station, the Minnesota congressman first floated the idea of a unity ticket with Haley and himself. WCCO host Chad Hartman that, that's the most radio name I've ever heard in my life. Then asked if Phillips would be interested in being Haley's vice presidential pick if she were to run as an independent. Quote, I think it's a conversation that Ambassador Haley and I should have, if that's what this comes down to. He said of the former ambassador to the UN, anyone interested in an alternative that can actually win against Donald Trump should keep open minds and hearts about that. Phillips added, quote, I hope Nikki Haley does, and I think America could be very well served by some type of a bipartisan ticket that restores faith in government and, most importantly, demonstrates to the world, to the world, that America can work together and restore its extraordinary brand around the world. <laughs> so he's basically saying, yeah. Yeah, me and Nikki Haley. I'd love to do that. Let's do that. So look, this is one of those things where... The normie instinct, people who are not like too involved in politics and sort of barely follow follow it at all, but get some sense of some stuff every now and then, they might look at that and be like, oh, isn't that glorious? Republicans and Democrats coming together for the good of the country and to show we can all get along and we can solve problems together. Yes. That could be the normie instinct. Like, oh, yeah, they're willing to work together. Oh, that's great. That's lovely. Yay, yay. Here's the problem in this scenario. You, Dean Phillips, are supposed to, and kind of do, based on your own words, right, disagree with Nikki on everything, or almost everything. I mean, you go down the list. Don't take my word for it. You go down the list. One, He's pro-choice. She's pro-life. He's pro-expanding health care. She's pro even repealing Obamacare, which would mean millions more lose health care. He wants to keep Medicaid the same or expand it. She wants to reduce it. Uh, same with Medicare. He wants to expand it or keep it the same. She wants to reduce it. He wants to, he's in favor of intelligent regulations of the marketplace. She wants to dismantle regulations. He wants to keep taxes the same or raise them on the wealthy. She wants to reduce taxes. He is certainly not in favor of all of the wars she would be in favor of. She has never met a war she didn't like. She wants to go to war with Iran right now. I, I can't think of a single issue where they're actually, forget even in agreement, where they're actually even close, where they're not polar opposites. Now, again, I'm just going based off what they say they believe, right? I'm taking them at that face value that they say they believe. So how the fuck are you going to get anything done that's positive in a scenario like that? Is it even possible to get anything done that's positive in a scenario like that? Because I would argue it's not, right? It's one thing if you want to say, you know, hey, me and my um, running mate, we don't agree on everything. We maybe have 80% agreement, but 20% we just flat out disagree. And then there's some other things where we have the same end goal but we want to get there a different way. I'm for, for single-payer health care. They're for a public option that gives people choice but would expand the number of people who get health care. So we disagree on the specifics and how to get there, but we're working towards the same goal. That's fine. That's fair. That makes sense. You can make that work. You might want to, you have a disagreement on a handful of issues here and there. Two out of ten, fine. That's workable. Uh, it Temperamental disagreements or or aggressive approach versus conservative approach in terms of how quick to make change, that's fair. That's all fair. But to say, let me get on the ticket with a person 
who I disagree with on 90 to 100 percent of issues. At that point, Dean, either you don't believe the things you say you believe, or you're just you just want the cameras on you, and you just want to remain relevant by any means necessary, Dave Rubin style or Tulsi Gabbard style, right? At some point, we have we have to say that that's the inevitable conclusion. Either you don't believe the things you say you believe, because you couldn't be her VP in that scenario, or you don't believe anything, and you're just like, I just want to stay in front of the cameras. I just want to stay relevant by any means necessary. Because the thing that nobody else will tell you, but I'll tell you, is it is impossible to make something like that work. Because it's, again, it's like, what do you, you want to fight over every little policy change that's going to happen? That tells me, no, you wouldn't actually do that. Maybe you agree with her mo on more things than, than you let on, right? Maybe you actually have 80% agreement with her, even though you pretend like you disagree on everything. There's, okay, there's a bunch of different ways to interpret this situation. Literally, none of them are positive for Dean Phillips. And Crystal always said about him, she was like, I don't, I don't get him. I don't understand. What's he doing? Like, what's going on here? What's he doing? And I don't know. I mean, my default is to always go to what, what they say they're doing, right? I think he viewed himself as maybe I can be the savior of the Democrats. Maybe I can come in and replace Joe Biden. I'm younger. I'm more intelligent. You know, I can run a good campaign. He probably genuinely thought, yeah, that's going to happen. But now it didn't pan out. And now you're seeing desperation. That's what you're seeing. It's desperate. Please keep me relevant, Nikki Haley, please. Well, she's about to be irrelevant too. You know, as soon as Super Tuesday, she's going to lose every state. And then what? If she stays in the race, it's because she wants to be, wants, hey, maybe Trump will die or maybe he'll go to prison. And in that scenario, I want to have some delegates at the convention to maybe make some sort of a play, right? Or the don the billionaire donors are telling me to stay in because they want to hurt Trump and help Biden. And the more money Trump has to spend in the primary means he has less for the general, which would help Biden. Like, that's possible, right? But she's also about to be irrelevant, bro. It, it, I don't know. It's just, it's desperate. It's desperate. It's desperate is what it is. And I don't want to hear it like, I'm sick of the fetidization, is that how you say it, of bipartisanship. As if it is like definitionally good, but it's not. It's neither good nor bad. It depends. So if you have a bipartisan deal to end the drug war, great, I'll take it. That's positive. If you have a bipartisan deal to do the Iraq war, I'm against it. A bipartisan deal to deregulate Wall Street, I'm against it. This kind of bipartisanship he's talking about running with Nikki Haley... She would be the top of the ticket, and she's a fucking neocon warmonger psychopath who wants to destroy the economy by going back to trickle-down economics. Where are you going to find any sort of, like, how are you going to work with that, right? Unless you agree with it, or you don't care about anything, you just want your name in the, in the papers, right? I don't know. But, Dean, uh, not a good look. Kind of embarrassing, if I'm being honest with you. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.